Well, hi everyone, and uh, welcome back to Shady Oak Farm. Well, today I promised you we would build a predator guard for a duck house, or you could use a predator guard for a bird feed or whatever. This is going to fit on a four by four post. Um, the smallest I would go, at least with a duck house, this is a 24 inch square. This is 26 gauge galvanized steel. Um, it's it's rather thick to work with with tin snips, but it can still be cut. Um, you can buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot, Menard, something like that. I found this at Menard. I, not, I have not found any galvanized steel 26 gauge at Home Depot or Lowe's, but you can buy 28 gauge aluminum um, at the same for 24 by 24 or 36 by 36. Like I said, I wouldn't go any smaller than 24 by 24. Uh, I've done some 36 by 36, but I like I like the galvanized. It's a little bit thicker and it kind of forms better, so um, we're going to use that. So to, to get started, I lay it out on a piece of plywood. I just got a piece of plywood here, and I use a felt marker. I'm going to find my felt tip marking pen. And since I've made a few of those, I have a couple things I do. So the first thing I do is take a measurement and find a center. So this is why I use just a piece of scrap plywood. So I find center 12 inches. Find the other way 12 inches. And then go back again and mark at 12 inches. So the reason I want to find the center because I got to make a circle. Because I'm going to cut this in a circle in order to make the cone. So the first thing I do, I made a little stick, and you don't have to do this. You can drill that. Hold on. Got my tools behind me a little bit. So I drill a hole in the center. Like so. And I made this stick for making circles. I use this for a lot of different things. So I got two and a half for a five inch circle, 12 inches for a 24, 18 for a 36. So you remember, half the distance. So what I do is I take a screw. I put it in my 12 inch hole. it down and make sure I got plenty of room to spin this thing around. I gotta move my tools out of the way because it will hit. Like so. And then what I do is I take a felt tip pin and I put a hole in there to fit a felt tip pin in here. And I just hold it pretty much straight up and I do my circle. You can use a piece of string, you don't have to use, I did that, first time I did these I used a piece of string. And that works too, just put it on a nail or something. But when you do several of these, this is so much easier. So there's my 24 inch circle. And then what I do, for a 4 inch post, For the center, we need a five inch circle uh, for, the, for a four by four post. So what I do here, I use my same stick. I draw me a circle, just spin it around. Get my tank reader out of the way. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get down there and see if you can see it with a lot of light. So you can see I have a 24 inch circle and I got a five inch circle in the center. That's kind of established the, uh, where the four by four is gonna go. So the next thing you need to do is you need to take a slice out. Back up. 
Back there, find the tools again. So you need to take a for a for a to make this a cone, you gotta take a an eight inch slice out. Like a pizza slice. So I'm just gonna mark it. Get my felt tip out. There's four. And I'll just use the compass set on four inches. And there's eight. So all I did was I just set a, a compass on four inches and then I just did did it twice, four inches and then four inches again, and cut it off. That's the easiest way I found it for the circle. Then take a straight edge. I'm just gonna use my marking stick. And draw your slice for your pie. Like I say, these are not hard to make. The hardest part is you got a good pair of pin snips, and then the other hard part, over trial and error, as I found, is creating the cone itself. Right now, I just have a, a you know an eighth inch hole in the center. You don't want to cut the circle out at this point because you got to have something to mount onto the post. So if you think about it, here's a piece of four by four. You want something to be able to screw into the post because if I cut the circle out, then it's just going to fall over. And plus, you want to keep, you know, snakes out, anything else from going behind it. So, the solution I have found is that before I just kind of roughly got a little inch and a half circle in there. Well, now I'm going to use a uh, drill bit. So I'm going to use a hole saw bit, and I'm just going to draw a drill a circle in the center with a hole saw, and that will give my circle for me. I just kind of use this fly for a lot of things. But that was good enough. Take my chunk out of here. And you'll see what I'm talking about later when I get to that point. But this is the easiest way I found. So, there you go. Now, now I got a circle in the middle. Now I'll cut my pie out and cut my circle with pin sticks. And I'll go ahead and I'll speed this up after I start cutting. I'm just going to initially start cutting it. And then I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch me cut the whole thing. But it takes time. So I'm just taking a pair of pin snips. And if you ever use a pair of pin snips, depending on which way you're holding them, you got them this way or this way. It depends on which way you can cut around in a circle. So I'm going clockwise. You can go counterclockwise. It doesn't make a difference. You just have to flip your cutters over. And you can see it, it cuts fairly good. Now you might want to wear gloves. You know stuff can get pretty sharp. I don't, but you got soft hands or something, you know, I don't know. I want you all to cut your fingers.
get rid of our sharp ones. They might cut themselves. I'm going to go get rid of these. All right, so there's my circle. That wasn't too bad. Now I'm going to cut the pie out. Same thing, take the 10 snips. Cut your slice of pie out. So, there's my piece of pie out, and now we're ready to form the cone. So, probably the most difficult part you really will have, because depending on what you got, you can use screws. I use screws and rivets, but I replace the screws with the rivets. I like to rivet them. But the first thing you want to do is shape the cone. So, get you a clamp or something. And this would be easier if you had two of them. But it's just myself right now, so what I'm going to do is form a cone. So I'm going to bend this over like so. You can see that. I'm going to overlap it about an inch. So we're going to try to get a cone here. I'm going to hold on to this like so. Put me a clamp on it. Like I say, it's a little tough by yourself, but you can do it. All right. So there's partial my cone now. Now we're going to put a screw up top there. So if I'm going to change this clamp around, I want this clamp to sit the other way. Very careful. This is where you get cut at. So this is like razor sharp. The reason I want to do that, I want that clamp to sit like that. So now you can see I got my cone. So we're going to bend this around. We're going to overlap these two all the way down. All right, so we got our cone and I got it clamped here like that. So next what we're going to do is we're going to relieve a little pressure off the center here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 4x4, I can just have a scrap here, and I'm just going to kind of get an idea where my 4x4 is going to go on here. And I'm just going to draw a crude line. That has to be perfect. So, what I did, I just kind of drew where my 4x4 four four is going to go there. And what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to cut, I'm going to put an X in here. like so. So I made an X in there like so. 
And the reason for that being is that I want to be able to save material here to put my screws on when I put it on the post. But right now I need to relieve some of that pressure in order to make that cone. So right now it's having a hard time to form. So I'm just going to take my clippers and cut these. In fact, you can take it off if you want it now. We have our, uh, our X in place. So let's go ahead and undo this. So then I go ahead and cut my X. Easier to cut when it's flat like this than it's in a cone. And you might have to clean this up a little bit later to make the X's bigger, but you can do that. Now, it would be nice if you had, if some of you might have out there, I just use a pair of alignment cutters. It would be nice if I had a pair of uh, metal bending cutters, you know, to uh, bend these up, these tabs up a little bit, but I don't have that. Something I might have to buy sometime, buy them at Harbor Freight or somewhere. much easier this way now. So go back, we're going to clamp it. Like I said, I go about an inch, inch and a half. Whatever you feel comfortable with. There's no, uh, no exact measurement right there. Put this on the other way again. Now be very, very careful because this stuff is sharp. We're going to see if we can get one of these screws in here. Once you get a screw in there, it makes it a lot easier. So, there you go. I got one screw in. That's the hardest part, getting that first screw in there. Once you get one in there, it's pretty solid now. You don't have to worry about flying apart on you. You don't need to clamp anymore. It's getting that first screw in that makes it tough. And like I say, I'll replace that screw with a rivet, and I'll show you what I do with the rivets. But right now, I just want to get one in there so I can get this together. And our hole doesn't look great up there right now, but we'll clean that up. That's not a problem. But we're going to put another screw in up top, and then I'll replace that with a rivet. Now, like I say, you don't have to do that. You can use these screws. These are just, like I say, I got one inch. You can probably use, or these are three quarter maybe. These are three quarter. You can do a half even probably. You don't need them this long. 
And it won't hurt a thing if you just leave the screws in there. As you can see, it's a lot easier once you get that first one. How easy that one is. That second one is real easy. So now I got two in there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my drill bit. All right, so I'm going to do rivets. I'm going to get you a 3 16 inch drill bit. That's what my rivet size are. And all I do is drill a hole for the rivets. So I'm going to go down here and put one in first at the bottom. I don't know if you've ever seen rivets before, but they're just a, they got a little nail, they call them nail on there, and then you got the rivet itself. Basically what you do, you put the rivet inside the hole. This is a rivet gun. You can buy these fairly cheap. This is an arrow. And they got different size rivets. You can change the, the uh, bushing on it, depending on what size you want. So I'm putting a 3 16 with pretty good size by eight. So my rivet is an eighth inch wide. And then all you do is squeeze the handle down. And make an air one too, which would be nice. This first is a little tough because it's on the end. And then what happens is it breaks that little nail off. And then if you look underneath here, that's what the top side looks like. So there's my rivet and there's my screw. And then the bottom side, it swells that up. When you pull that nail, it pulls this and it swells it up and it locks that on there. So now I can take my screw out there. What I'll do is I'll just put a rivet in that hole. Drill a little bit bigger. Take me another rivet. Stick in that. There you have it. Rivets in, back side. There's a the cone. Now the hardest part. <laughs> I always say it's the hardest part. Every part is hard, right? It's not really that bad, guys. And girls. All right, so my four by four, I got it in there somewhere like so. This is where it would pay if you had a metal working tool, but I'm just going to use a pair of lineman cutters, pliers, anything you've got, and bend these tabs up. So the next thing you got to do is fit that 4x4 four four in there. And we might have to cut those those uh, X's a little deeper. And that's not a problem once you do this. We'll clean it all up here.
Looks like I'm a little off there. And you can tell when you look at it. So that needs to be peeled back a little bit more. So we're going to make this X a little bit bigger. Like so. Now remember you want to, and once you put it on the post out there, you can also take the hammer and bend these corners around a little bit. Keep anything from coming up in there like a snake or something. You just don't want a big gap there. So now what I do, I got to fit on there. Nice and snug. Yes, that will come off. Then what I do is I clean up these tops. You don't have to do this, but I just like them square them off. So there's no anything to get you. And I just cut them like so. Just you just need something to put the screws in. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go ahead and screw it on this temporary post here, like that. So, what I'll do is I'll take a post like this, put it back on here, like so. At this point, it should slip on there. Once you get it on, and this is what you're going to do when you get out in the field there. You're just going to put it on the post. Remember, you're going to put this on first before you put your uh, the house on. And then what I'll do is take a drill bit. What I do is I just take a drill bit, go ahead and pre-drill these. Two to go through here. And then what I'll do is I like take a screw. It's got a head on them. These are uh, lab screws, they call them, but they got a little head on them. I like to take those. And I'll go ahead and pass it on this post now just to have it sitting there. That's how I keep it. This is how you do it out in the field anyway. Like I say, this doesn't have to look pretty. But it has to be effective. Try to get it adjusted the best I can where I think it looks pretty level.
One more. Like I say, if I was out in the field, I'd take it. Hammer these around. I'd bend that corner over, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll wait till I get out in the field. I don't know if you heard me. I don't want to bend that corner over right now. I'll wait till I get out in the field and then I'd bend that around. And so there you have it. There's your predator guard. So. It's 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 like it's not you know making the duck house is a lot easier, um, but you got to have these, and you know if you can find them you know somewhere, and there's, there's probably a neater way to do it on top here, and I'm getting better at it. I'm not perfect at it, so the whole this thing helps uh, doing it with the uh, hole saw. Um, that helps put the circle in the center, but. You know, I still haven't perfected making that where the two by four goes, you know, getting that perfect there. But uh, it'll work, you know, and it's all you're doing is trying to keep the, you know, you try to keep the raccoons, everything that climb up the post, they can't get up and climb up around, you know, so, you know, so that's, that's all you're trying to do is keep that from happening. Keep snakes from coming up, you know, keep it away from the eggs. So this keeps the squirrels, the snakes, you know, not that squirrels are bothering probably, but, you know, definitely the raccoons, the possums, anything that'll eat the eggs, so. There you have it. Like I say, it's not, uh, it's not, it has to be pretty, but it has to be effective, and that's, that's effective. So, um, that's how you make a predator guard. Like I say, you can, if you use the 28 gauge, it's a lot easier, it works a lot easier, it's just a little thinner. I like the thicker metal, you know, it forms very well, it's not flimsy, so I just stick with that. So, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.